What up, Clay? How you doing, man? Great. How you doing? Good. Um, what's it like seeing this team get off to the start it has gotten off to so far? Oh, it's incredible. I mean, 15-2 and two is pretty ridiculous. I don't think um, any of the pundits saw this coming, so I'm not going to say I didn't because I have my wholehearted belief in these guys, and uh, I'm just really proud of the way they played. It's uh, it's very inspiring every day for me to go into workouts knowing that these guys are the best team in the league right now. How are you feeling and how is your game feeling after some of these scrimmages? Yeah. Oh, man, it's so exciting. Um, my uh, Just to be running up and down the court and um, playing basketball, um, it's, uh, it's truly a blessing and it makes coming to work so easy. Uh, the, the boring stuff's behind me and now just getting back in game shape is uh, it's really exciting and I got to stay patient because I can be an overeager person to get out there and play, but I'm just incredibly grateful to be out there and the work the training staff and I have done over the last two years is, is, is um, really paying off and I'm just, it's hard to put in the words how grateful I am to be playing basketball again. How much do you feel like yourself, you know, movement wise out there and, and all that? Uh, I'm, I feel like myself. I feel great. I'm knocking shots down. I'm playing great defense. I'm, I'm playing defense. The hardest part is just simulating a game and that conditioning that goes with being a great NBA player. It's, uh, it's hard and it's, it's a, definitely a thing that takes, a, takes time. Clay, you're, you're in that space where you are so close to coming back, but maybe you just have a few more weeks. If you get to have a say in your own readiness along with team doctors, do you have a time in mind that you'd like to come back? Uh, I don't care. It's really hard to say because it's, a, it's definitely a feel thing. It's hard to just put a date on it, but who knows when it could be, but it will be in the first half of the season, hopefully the first trimester. So... That's a third, right? A trimester? Yeah. School. There we go. So hopefully sooner than later, because I am um, really excited to get back to balling. And we kind of just heard from Kavon Looney about that mental space of being back on the court, knowing that you're practicing, but knowing that you're not quite in game shape. What are the things you're looking for in your own body that indicate you'll be in game shape? Hmm. Well, right now we're playing like four minute games. So by next week, hopefully five minute quarters. Week after that, six, seven. And hopefully by in a month, I'm playing 12 minute quarters. And that's when I'm approaching gameplay is around in a month's time, maybe a few weeks after. I'm not sure. But each week is just increasing that level of uh, volume. And uh, it's not rocket science. So for me, it's just a feel thing. And Knowing I will come back, obviously, to immense restriction for a while, and I don't want to come back and be a shell of myself. I want to come back like I was last time I was playing, and I was one of the best players in the world. Clay, can you tell the lift now being out there in practice again that your presence gives everybody else around you? Uh, it just feels normal again. It feels, uh, I mean, like, just being out there with Steph and Dre, Andre Loon. I mean, we got such a great history together. And with guys like Andrew, Jordan, Juan, Damian, who've been here for a couple of years now, they have a grasp of the offense and the defense. So I think it will be pretty seamless when I come back. Now that you're doing everything again, has there been any surprises, whether it was like yourself, like, oh, wow, the bounce is still there, or even a teammate who you haven't played with, like, yeah. JK, wow, he's stronger than I thought. Uh, surprises. Um, I mean, no, I saw JK in summer league and seen him elevate the way he did. I see why he was picked seventh. He um, has all the tools, especially at his age. You can't teach some of the things he does. But for me, I was, uh, you know, I, I anticipated, you know, coming back with not as much bounce, but I feel like I can get it get it back and then luckily for me my game isn't predicated on jumping 12 feet high so if I just get a few dunks every other game a dunk or two every other game that's pretty consistent for what I was doing and uh I mean I'm 
my game's based off skills, so I knew I could come back and still be really good. You've said, you know, you need to be patient for when you come back, and then when you do come back, you want to be that version of yourself that you were when you got injured, but that might take some time as well. So just how do you, what are you telling yourself to stay patient up until you get to get on the court? And then even after that, getting back to who you were. That's a great question. I mean, you got to have realistic expectations of yourself. And um, I, I was a numbers guy before. I always wanted to shoot a certain percentage or average a certain amount of points. But now coming back after two tough injuries, uh, I kind of scratched that. I just have a, you know, open canvas of what's going to happen. It could be, I just want to be efficient. I don't care what my numbers are as long as I am shooting and playing efficiently. And I know with time, whether it's toward the end of this year, come playoff time or next year, I know my numbers will, will be great again. Um, just two years of not playing in an NBA game, you got to taper down the big expectations of scoring 37 in a quarter or 14 threes in a game. I plan on doing that again, but who knows when? It's tough to say. How is your defense feeling to you right now? Uh, it feels great. Um, going against guys like Leandro Barbosa has really prepared me because he's still so quick and was one of the best slashers in the league when he was playing. And um, my defense is coming along just like my offense, and I don't anticipate being a slouch on that end when I come back. Been so close to coming back. Where's your headspace at now compared to where it was six months ago, two years ago? Uh, I try not to revisit those times because uh, they were just really hard. But it is a part of being an athlete is going through rehab and being injured. It's the worst part of the sport, but it is a big part. And for me, six months ago, I was uh, looking toward, looking forward to just running, just um, jogging and not really elevating yet, still building up my calf strength. And now I'm still doing the calf stuff, but I'm sprinting, I'm jumping, I'm full go, and it's incredible. I mean, I give myself credit because it takes great mental fortitude to not only go through one rehab, but two strenuous ones back to back. That's uh, I leaned on a lot of great stories though, of guys who've been through it and girls. Really important stuff. Have you thought of the game day look yet? Long hair, short hair, headband. Have you thought of that? I see it, you know. It's on my Instagram. And, you know, um, when you spend so much time in solitude training, you kind of want to try new things. And here's one of them. Jordan Poole is in your starting spot right now. You kind of posted about him last night. Just what have you thought about the way he's filled that spot? Well, I've had a... a First, a really close look at what Jordan's been doing the last few years. And Jordan came in as a rookie who had a, cr a crazy amount of energy, who had a lot of sauce to his game and just needed to harness it a little bit. And to see his growth as a player, um, it's incredible. He's playing way above where he was picked at with 26. He's looking like he should have been a lotto pick. And the man is an incredible offensive player. His defense is coming along. And it's just, um, it makes me proud to see because uh, he reminded me of myself when I was in my younger years as well with the way he would react emotionally to missing shots or having a bad game. I could tell it really bothered him. And you you like to see that as a vet because that means the guy really cares about his craft. And now to see those hours he had, he, he would, you know, have an off shooting night his rookie year and he would put up uh, hundreds of shots after the game. And that, um, that just shows you where, what he wants, he wants to be great and, I'm so proud of him. He's an incredible, incredible player. Back, back to you quick. Have you had sequences in these scrimmages or moments where you're like, yeah, you know, like that felt good? And, and yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Every cut, every pass, every shot you take, I'm just grateful to, just to compete. I mean, there's not many other spaces in my life where I could compete at this level. So it's uh, it was definitely something I really missed. Has there been, you know, I mean, you're known as kind of like as a detonation type player where it's like three threes in 45 seconds. Have you had those type of moments? Yeah, but I mean, yeah, you can say that. And hopefully you have, hopefully I do that when I come back for this game. That would be nice.
it's probably unprecedented in the NBA to come back from an ACL injury and then an Achilles injury. What you're doing is extremely difficult. How would you describe that difficulty? And on the other side of this, do you want to be an inspiration or a history maker? Uh, yeah, I mean, that would be cool, but I just look at it as part of the job. You know, I played a lot of basketball in the last 10 years, and my body was... You know, I felt great every year, year in, year out. So I'm um, lucky at Plan Air I do because technology and science have allowed athletes to come back better than ever. So I think I'm just lucky to have be around the training I am and with the staff and the coaches and the science of sports now. It's pretty amazing. What's that? Um, I think it was more mentally hard than it was physically. I can do the work. I can be in the gym all day, but having to sit there and watch, uh, it's not fun, especially for anyone who likes to compete and likes to win. Uh, you mentioned that there, you guys are surprising a lot of people starting the way you have 17-2. What's it been like for you seeing the aura around this team come back to getting closer to the levels that it was at before you got hurt? It's great. It's something I expected. <clears throat> And we are now a type of team where it's championship or bust. And that's a that's a really cool position to be in. I mean, not a lot of players get to experience that. Your uh, boat time with James Wiseman over the summer was like well documented. And it seems like he still has a little bit of time before he's coming back. But just as, you know, two guys who I'm assuming have done some workouts and rehabbing process together, especially when the team was on the road, what are things that you're telling him just about being patient, get but get also yeah. saying positive. Well, I mean, I gave him a book to read today, Young, Black, Rich, and Famous by Dr. Todd Boyd. It's about, you know, the NBA and hip-hop culture and how it globalized the sport. And I think it's such a good read. It's such an empowering read. And James is such a great listener. And I just, you know, want to help him further his education because these guys are so talented. They just get to skip university now. And you got to realize that you still got to grow as a person. So I think exercising your mind is just as important as your body. I try to tell him that. And he's a great listener, and the future is so bright for James, and I can't wait to play for him. He's play with him. He, we haven't had a, uh, a center like him in a long time who can run the floor and stretch the spa spacing vertically. Mm -hmm. I think he's a professor at USC. He's really he's he's really cool to listen to, really cool pop yeah. culture critic. He is a professor at USC, but I didn't know why people read USC guys. But hey, you know you got. It's only I keep the competitiveness on the hardwood. I'm I got I used to be bitter at USC and UCLA, but um, being a Coug is a part of my story, and I you know enjoy competing against those schools. It gave me fire back then because I was like, oh, you didn't recruit me. I'm gonna show you why. So I have no qualms against them. <laughs> How much time have you spent just, you know, talking with James and talking him through what he's going through? Because obviously you guys are the two guys that everybody's waiting for. And you guys are spending some time together working out, just getting ready rehabbing. Yeah, we spent all summer together and we are locker mates right by each other. And I just try to tell him to um, enjoy every day. I remember when I was his age, I was in school when I was his age. So I just try to tell him that it will go by like this and, he is the future of our franchise, as well as J.K. and Moses. And um, one day we'll hand him the keys and just to um, enjoy being a warrior because it's a, we play in a great place uh, in San Francisco and being having the fan base we do with fans in Oakland to the South Bay to the North. It's, it's special. It wasn't always like this. And I try to tell him just – I just try to remind him he's going to carry the torch one day. You, you kind of mentioned right there, handing them the keys. You know, there's been plenty of, of, of talk, particularly in the offseason, about, you know, do you, you know, mortgage the assets to, to help the now? What have you thought about the plan from up top and how it's been executed? Uh, well, I mean, we all trust in our front office. Um, we do not have the success we've had without their input and their guidance. So I think the plan is coming together so beautifully. We picked up some incredible veterans this summer, Otto and Nemanja, and then to add the young talent we did, it's uh, it's incredible. And you just got to give our front office and coaching staff so much credit for being such forward thinkers and combining the veteran presence we have with the youthfulness we do. It's 
it's really great. It's hard to get the best of both worlds. Clay, following up on that, you mentioned it was championship or bust. You know what it takes to win a title. With you coming back and with James coming back, do you feel like this team has the ingredients to win a title this year? Oh, yeah. It's 15 and 2. That's a great indicator of, and our defense, I think is top three in the league, as well as our offense. And I'm not even out there yet. Think about that. Really think about that. I'm more motivated than ever as well. And um, I want a championship so bad, more than anything. Draymond talked the other day about <clears throat> what's driving him. And, you know, part of it is the haters and the doubters and stuff. Is that part of your deal too? Yeah, no question. No question. I wanted to be on that top. I wanted some recognition. I didn't get it, and that's fine. You no, know, you get recognition, you go win. So I just want to go win again. I want to win a fourth ring and not being able to compete again. I just feel like, I mean, for the last two years, I feel like I have a lot of pent up energy to go out there and prove, not to anybody else, to, to myself, I'm still one of the best. So we got the, our court. We have a finals MVP, two time MVP, DPOY, champions. We got the core. We got the youth. We got the, the um, role players who are showing why we went after them. And I just really want to win a championship again. I want to just, duh, that's it. Can just quickly, could you give us a peek into these scrimmages you're, you're playing? You know, you mentioned our Zaza's in it, your garden, Leandro, and some of that. What's just, what is that been like? It's so good having those guys back. I mean, we got such great history together. Leandro could, he moves like he could still play. Zaza is just a smart player. He, um, he might be a little slower than he was, but he could still set a mean screen and throw a great pass. And playing with Moses and JK and Juan and all these other guys who are young and lively bodies is preparing me well. It's the first time I played with them on Monday, and that was just a milestone to play with my teammates. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't fear getting hurt again because um, the last two times I did get hurt, it was just such a freak accident, you could say. And... I'm just, uh, can't, I, I hate to use the phrase can't wait because I love to be present in my life, but I cannot wait to play in front of our fans again. I uh, really, really enjoy being a warrior. All right, let's do one on uh, Zoom with Scott Osford. Go ahead, Scott. Yeah, hey, Clay. Uh, looking at the team now, watching the team play now, do you think because of the, the so many shooting weapons and so much energy and so much spacing that this team might be more conducive to your game than ever before. Huh. That's a great observation, Scott. I would agree with you. Um, I mean, we've had some really great years winning 73 games, going back to back. So it's tough to say now more than ever that this team fits my style, but it's just, uh, it makes the transition coming back in the lineup so easy. You know, we all know I'm not, an ISO player or a guy who's just going to go out and handle the ball all night. I use my teammates to get open. I cut off Draymond, Loon. I scream for Steph. So to see these other guys doing what I was doing in the past is great. Uh, and it, and just from a observing standpoint, it's so fun to watch. Like on the bench, it's really beautiful basketball. Great. Anything else, Scott? Was that your early one? That's good. Thanks. Great. Okay. Thank you, uh, Clay. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you.